Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be exploring Western religious perspectives on the nature of human will. Okay, um, before we do that, I just want to talk a bit about why this show is important, why I'm doing this show. Um, civilization has been basically founded on this idea, this notion that human beings have a free will. And, um, and <coughs> it's my, um, my conclusion, I think, my, my guess more so perhaps, that um, <coughs> that illusion, that, that perspective of free will probably causes a lot more harm than it does good. Um, and a good way to understand that is like, think of your day-to-day -day interactions with the people in your life you know, spouse, friends, kids, parents, whatever. Um, to the extent that we attribute free will to ourselves and others um, and them, we, we will blame ourselves and them for what doesn't go right. And, and God knows, I mean, like, as human beings, we're like flawed in so many ways, so things are obviously going to go um, not according to how we might like all the time. So, so with the free will perspective, you know, we're at each other all the time. We're just like, you did this. No, I, did. you know. And with the, um, when you understand, when you understand that, hey, whatever, whoever you're interacting with did was completely compelled, that they weren't up to it, they weren't responsible for it at all, they, um, they had to do what they did because that's the nature of causality, that's the nature of our world. Then, you know, <clears throat> then you go from like, you go from blaming yourself and each other to, um, to saying, whoa, you know, like, why would the universe like cause you to do something like this? Or why would the universe, why, why would the causal past create this kind of situation for us? Okay, so it becomes more of a learning experience than a, um, than a um, accusatory or retributory or um, judgmental experience. All right, um, now, okay, now, I've got all these shows on the internet, like, you know, they're, um, they're presented here in White Plains, of course, and in the surrounding communities, but like, you know, I, I upload them to causalconsciousness.com. So if you Google the exploring, exploring the Illusion of Free Will, it should probably be the first entry up there. You might see my meetup. If you guys, if anybody's like in Manhattan, near the Manhattan area, I have a meetup on this like every month, like the first Saturday of each month, and it's pretty cool. We just like sit around and talk about this. It's great. All right, and one more thing before I get into the, the topic of today's show. Um, I want to just, you know, it's very important that we have a common shared understanding of what we mean when we say free will. Okay, the idea, free will, the way it's been used traditionally in religion and in criminal justice, in our personal interactions, just in general, in philosophy, is that... Um, we, as human beings, um, are able to choose to be however we want to be, regardless of anything, regardless of anything, regardless of how our parents taught us or didn't, regardless of what we learned or didn't, regardless of our level of intelligence, regardless of our personality, regardless of all these things that we clearly don't have any control of. Um, and it's, you know... It's like, all right, the idea is some people say, well, it's so obvious that we have a free will, but the idea is like when people don't think about this enough, it leads to kind of like um, confusing conclusions. It, it's not, for example, that we experience our wills as being free because we don't. We simply experience our wills as, as wills. Will, by definition, the will is like what... Um, what empowers us, enables us to act, just to decide. It's volition. 
Okay, so yeah, we, we act all the time, we decide all the time, we have wills, we absolutely have wills, but the salient consideration here is that they're not free. They're not free from the causal past, they're not free from genetics, from environment, they're not free from any of that. And so, obviously, the, uh, we're left with the um, unavoidable, irrefutable um, conclusion that our human will is causal or seen from a different perspective, unconscious and not free. Okay. All right. So let's get, let's get on with, um, because like, um, even though, you know, the notion of free will pervades civilization across the board, you know, personal, criminal justice, education, politics, socioeconomics and all, it really, I think, is probably founded most so um, it's, it's, it's kind of like a religious um, doctrine, I think, more so. It's a philosophical doc doctrine also. I mean, it goes back to, to the Greeks and uh, a bit before, I think. But, but, you know, it's really religion and, I guess, criminal ju justice to a certain extent, although criminal justice constantly allows for exceptions. It's really religion that, that kind of actually develop this idea and really it perpetuates it. And it's unfortunate because religion, you know, has been responsible for a great many goods in this world. You know, before you have to realize, before there was civil law, all there was was religious law, you know, and um, they, you know, they could, couldn't really enforce it all that well sometimes. Sometimes they could, uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, but um, it's like the religious law it, you know, everybody basically um, subscribed to it. And, and that's why we have um, this world. And, you know, and, and you can't, you know, you can't um, hold them accountable either. This is a, a, the very cool thing about, like, understanding that our human will is, like, causal and, or unconscious rather than free. You know, in terms of, like, um, they're getting it wrong, wrong back then, we getting it wrong now. It's very ironic. It's very kind of, like, surreal because... What's happening is that the universe, the causal past, God, for this show, God, I guess, is actually, actually causes us to get it wrong. <laughs> you know, it like, um, it causes us to, it's kind of like when we see a mirage, okay? We see, we're driving along a road and, um, and we see the, you know, we think we see water, but no, it's like, you know, there's a lot of illusions that, um, that you know, we're led to believe in. All right, so let's, let's get to this. All right. St. Paul um, said the first thing in the um, Christian tradition. I got to go, gotta do another show on, on the Jewish tradition that precedes, um, you know, Christianity because it's very interesting. I mean, I, I was Orthodox Jewish, practiced Orthodox Judaism for a while and about a few years, and the, the understanding, the, the teaching that I learned was that, well, yes, the bottom line is that there is no free will because God is omnipotent. God is all-powerful, so there can't be any free will. But, you know, our, um, our basic kind of day-to-day -day understanding, our working understanding is that we do. That's, that's, you know, that's what my understanding, that's what I learned is the uh, Orthodox Jewish perspective. But, um, but then, you know, when the Romans came along, and, and see, they... They didn't, you know, they didn't, re they didn't really deal with this, you know. They just, you know, you did something right, you're rewarded. You did something wrong, you're punished, whatever. And, and they just never got into, like, you know, trying to, like, understand, well, you know, what's causing us to do this? What's, you know, why are we doing what we do? All right, so anyway, St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, 58 A.D., he recognizes, he's, I think, I mean, well, there's Leucippus that, um, that's, what is it, 380 B.C. That, that understood, you know, he, he, he wrote the first statement on our causal will. He framed it within the prospect of, of causality or determinism. He said, like, everything happens for a reason and nothing at random. You know, he didn't really specifically address human will, but from that conclusion, you can easily understand that that applies to human will. So, all right, so anyway, what, what 
St. Paul said in Romans 7.15, he said, I don't understand myself at all. And this is a, a modern translation, of course. For I really want to do what is right, but I can't. I do what I don't want to, what I hate. Okay, so he gets it. He gets it. He, he said, wait a minute, you know. If I had, you know, if, it, if I had my way, I'd be a saint. I'd be, well, <laughs> you see, he was a saint. I don't know if he was a saint back then. I don't know if they made him a saint later. I guess they made him a saint later. But anyway, yeah, he, basically what he's saying, like, you know, early Christianity, Jewish um, religion in general, is about trying to be good, trying to do good. And so he's recognizing, wait a minute. If it was up to me, I would be doing good all the time. I would be a perfect angel, you know? Um... But he realizes that. He realizes that no. He realizes that um, he can't do, decide whatever he wants. He does stuff that's wrong. So he gets it. He gets it. But, well, I don't know what happened between 58 A.D. and about 390 A.D. Because, like, around that time, <clears throat> then St. Augustine comes around. He writes the actual book. He, well... To preface this, he's grappling with the, with the question of evil in the world. You know, because like the basic Christian belief is that God is all good. You know, God is all good. So if like there is evil in the world, well, it can't be his fault. So like that was Augustine's, um, you know, rationale, his, his, his premise that since God you know, is all good, what we do wrong has to be up to us. We have to have the, the freedom to just, like, do st stuff wrong so we can't blame God. Now, this is kind of, like, interesting, because, like, you know, and I don't know if it, probably at the same time he wrote this book, um, another kind of a very popular religious Christian um, perspective is, you know, or practice is, like, when things go right, you know, we thank God because, like, you know, I mean, like, in, in circumstances like that, we understand that, like, God is actually what allows us to do whatever good we do. If, if God doesn't want us to do it, we, we don't do it. We can't do it. And that's why we thank God. But, but it's funny because, like, we use that rationale, that correct rationale in that instance, but when it comes to, like, you know, um, things going wrong, we can't blame God anymore. We've got to blame ourselves. It's like... And again, you know, as I started the show, it, it's insidiously harmful. It's pervasively harmful. And like, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll go a lot more into this. So anyway, St. Augustine, he wrote a book on this. It, it was called De Libero Arbitrero and written around 386 to 95 AD. And it's translated, De Libero Arbitrero is translated on free will. It's Latin. And uh, so he writes, he writes, Evil deeds are punished by the justice of God. They would not be punished judge justly if they had not been performed voluntarily. That logic is right. That logic is right. I mean, like, you know, um, the reality is that God, the causal past, makes us do something. Let's say in this case it's something wrong. And then we're judged for it. Then, then we're punished for it a lot of times, whatever. That's not just. <laughs> that is absolutely not just. But that's the way the universe is. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to get into that in a lot more detail on, on future shows. But, um, but anyway, so he started out, I mean, like, one way to refute Augustine's contention is that, like, well, if God created the world and there was nothing existing before God created the world except God, then the only thing that God could have created the world from was herself, himself. So, um, so that's the thing. So like, if that's the case, then God would be both good and evil. God is everything. You know, he, he has to be evil to whatever. And, you know... Um, we're not going to get into like the definition of evil. Well, very briefly, um, the definition that I prefer, I mean, one definition religiously is like doing, you know, what, what the religion says is, is, um, is good or evil, whatever, you know, according to the religious precepts, according to the prophets and all that. 
But I think a clearer, more basic um, explanation was provided by John Locke, a British philosopher, a utilitarian philosopher. And he defined goodness as that which, that which creates happiness, so evil must therefore be that which creates unhappiness, pain, whatever. And this is relative, you know, the greatest happiness, you know, whatever. All right, so anyway, so, um, all right, so that's, that's the basis. That's the, the, the Christian basis of the, this belief in free will. But... You know, it's, it just, it doesn't stand up to logic. Again, like, if God is all-powerful, then what God says goes, period. Period, exclamation point. Another thing about this, um, one of, th there are three basic attributes that um, most major religions, certainly Christianity and I think Judaism, uh, attribute to God. Um, omnipresence, he's everywhere, there isn't a place where he's not, she, whatever. And so, like, from that perspective, you could say that, well, God is synonymous with the universe. Um, then another one is he's all-powerful, and we just went through that, or um, omnip omnipotent, rather. Um, and the third one is omniscient, omniscience, God is omniscient all-knowing. He knows everything. Of course, if you're everything, if you are everything, you have to know everything. How could you, how could you be everything without knowing everything? How could you have all power without knowing everything? So he knows everything. So the, the idea behind this is if, if God knows what's going to happen before it happens, what we're going to decide before we decide, and if God is all-powerful, then obviously, clearly, not only did, <laughs> are we doing what we, we do um, not because of a free will? It's because God, it's, it's God's will. <laughs> I mean, like, if, 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 if God has the power and God knows what we're going to do before we do it, before we decide, obviously it's God that's doing it and we're kind of like just manifesting God's will. That's the basic explanation. Um... Here's a pretty cool thing, um, a way to describe this. Um, cause like, and cause like one of the, one of the, um, one of the perspectives, one of the implications of, um, this whole matter of human will has to do with moral responsibility, moral accountability. In other words, like according to the free, free will perspective, you know, if, if you did something wrong or something right, you're personally accountable. You did it. You deserve to be rewarded, punished, whatever, for it. Um, but, all right, consider this scenario. Um, let's say you are um, a scientist. You create a robot, okay? And you give this robot, I know it's impossible, whatever, but you give this robot free will. Let's, let's, for the sake of, of this explanation. Okay, now this robot goes out and wreaks havoc, does something wrong, who knows. Um, but, but, you know, he does something, and you're up there before a judge, and, and you're trying to tell the judge, judge, listen, I gave this robot free will. You can't blame me. Now, I think you can understand how the ju judge isn't going to buy that. He said, well, the judge is going to say, well, yeah, fine. You know, you gave the, the robot free will, but you created the robot. You know, you're responsible for all this, and naturally the judge is operating under the free will perspective, but he's saying you're responsible for what the robot has done. Okay? So, apply that logic to, to God. Okay? Because certainly we didn't create ourselves. God created um, everything. God is everything. So, um, if, if God created us, then from that same logic we just applied to, to our building this robot and, you know, finding ourselves before a judge, then it's God who, who is ultimately responsible for what we do and what we don't do. Again, we praise God when we do good stuff. Okay, um... 
So, all right, I'm gonna, I got about seven minutes, and I've gone through the basic um, material of, of, of this, the basic theme of this show, but I just want to kind of like, kind of extempore, um, just explore this, just explore this. Okay, so, here's the thing. Um, Again, religions have been very, very good for the world in teaching the world morality. Granted, a lot of the morality has been, well, now, I mean, yeah, historically, our religion has been good. It's also created a lot of problems, because what happens is when one thing the religion does is, like, not only does it attribute free will to people, it... um, it divides people a lot of times, you know. If you're not with us, then you're against us. You know, if you're not, you know, we're with God, then if you're not with us, you can't be with God. <laughs> Ouch. Um, all right. Our world is um, in an extremely, extremely challenging era. It's just beginning. Um, between climate change, which is, which is going to be with us for decades, and this global, this new global economy that um, that is going to have to be dramatically different, also because of climate change. Because, you know, we're going to have to. What I'm trying to say is, we're going to have to create a pretty brand new world. You know, um, and the religious principles that we have today, like um, like this idea of free will. They are going to make it, um, these principles make it more difficult to get the work done we need to do um, with climate change. You've got people who are benefiting from the stuff that, you know, produces CO2, greenhouse gases that, um, that is responsible for the vast majority of climate change. And under the free will perspective, they're running for the, for the hills. I mean, like, you know, well, not really, because <laughs> generally, you know, what's, what's running this show is, is a lot of money, and uh, they're not running yet. But eventually they would. You know, once, oh, God, um, hopefully, we can, um, hopefully, hopefully we can avert the, the most dire, the most um, consequential impacts of climate change. But... Um, but the idea is like you have these people, a lot of us, who um, who are really, you know, doing, and, I, and and it's not their fault. You got to remember that you can't blame the the oil company executives, the um, the politicians, the rich, in general, to the extent that they, you know, <laughs> they lobby against um, environmental concerns. Um, you can't blame them because that's the way they, you know, that's, ha- that's their role, you know, that's their causal role in life. But, but the, the other thing is that, like, for example, let's say religions started preaching, started understanding, com- disseminating this, this new, it's, it's like a new New Testament, okay, this newer Testament, <laughs> this, this, um, this brand new Testament that, hey, you know, we got a few things wrong in the past. Um, yeah, we thought that, like, the earth was the center of the universe. We got that wrong. And we got this wrong, too. So, like, you know, church, um, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, they, they all kind of, like, say, wait a minute, we, we better get up to speed with this. So they start preaching that, hey, um, free will is a myth. It doesn't exist. It's, um, it can't exist. Everything is God's will, and so we neither blame ourselves or credit ourselves for anything. Now, imagine religions doing this, and imagine this being kind of like, I don't know how many years it might take. I mean, in this internet age, it could happen in a matter of a few years, really. Um, But imagine they take that perspective. Then all of a sudden, the the people who are responsible for... um, for climate change and, um, you know, a lot of, like, global inequalities, you know, related to the economy that have to, I guess, change, you know, based on, on this new 
global economy where, you know, we're dealing with, we're, we're having to kind of like divide a smaller pie among more people. So, so naturally, what will remain is like, you know, the causal past may still kind of compel these people, those, those of us who, um, who are acting as God's agents in this, to continue to a certain extent just for the, um, the personal benefit of it. And um, naturally, we would have to kind of like address that in some way. But at least, at least we wouldn't um, be having to face, you know, these people kind of just continuing to, um, to deceive, to confuse, to, to run away from the problem, to just to fight with us, to, to, um, to kind of... Um, you know, just prevent our efforts to do what we have to do for fear of being held personally accountable. That's the thing. So, religions, you know, adopt this brand new testament. Um, we go from a global perspective of blame and accountability to a causal understanding and and so we don't blame them. We make them do what they have to do, you know, because that, that's the only way that we're going to, like, save the planet for our kids, grandkids and all. I mean, what has to be done has to be done. But we do it from a perspective of um, understanding, understanding that they're not responsible. In other words, so we're not going to hold them, we're not going to punish them for, um, for doing that. And naturally across, you know, this would be across the board, I mean, like, with... with um, and, you know, as I said, our personal relationships with, with, with the criminal justice system. You know, there's so many people in jail and prison that are as innocent as, as you and me here. I mean, they're just extremely unlucky. Um, although some, some people in prison are actually happier than some of us out here. All right, I'm running out of time. I've got like six seconds. I hope you enjoyed the show. And we'll be back with more ex episodes explaining why free will is an illusion.